this is chapter 5 and we're gonna go over decimation and final check and final check I just mean that you want to give your mesh a once over and make sure that it is printable one thing to keep in mind is that all the pieces are, are thick enough because uh, if they're too thin like if it's a female character and she has really slender fingers your mesh might actually be so close to itself that the, the fingers would fall off or they'll print with just kind of be broken and it won't be it won't give you what you had in mind. Uh, so on my character, I'm going to look at his head, like these, this plate that I have on his head and this back plate, because those areas are, are pretty thin. You're going to want to merge all your pieces into one and then export it into an STL. And then this file is thought of as a series of cross sections that are printed paper thin. So looking up here in my mesh, I can see that this is good. You know, the, the cross section is fine. Uh, this is my biggest area of concern here. Maybe I'll even snip the top off again just for these places where I've really sort of mashed the mesh onto itself. Uh, oh, and you know what I should say is right away when you start doing this you're gonna want to have double-sided pressed. So here it is up on my interface and uh, on the standard, the default interface, it's down here under display properties. So you just open this up and you have double-sided down here. So you can turn that on and off. So this up here is looking pretty good. So I'm not going to worry so much about that. Uh, so first one is, are the pieces so thin that they won't print? Another thing you want to look for is to make sure that all of your sub-tools are properly overlapping one another. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to look at are these feet going into the base. So we have legs and this base piece. Gonna hide the bottom of this base and the base. Now I have to click double to show that. And you can see here that the feet are sticking through the base and everything's A OK with that. Another thing I wanted to clarify with, with this base piece is that I used a separate poly group for the bottom. Uh, and that was just to keep it flat. So by that I meant that in the early phases of when I was sculpting the base, I I took this bottom plane here, made it into a separate poly group, and then hit it or I would mask it so that as I was sculpting, I wouldn't disturb that flatness. And so obviously the base has to remain flat so that when I get it, I can put it on my shelf. Okay, outside of thin ankles and characters that are top heavy, you want to make sure that all your subtools are overlapping properly. So. So we're zooming in on the mouth and the teeth, uh, I just want to make sure that this tooth mesh piece is overlapping the inside of his mouth properly. So here you can see the teeth pressing through the bottom of the mouth uh, sock, the mouth loop, whatever you call that, the inside of the mouth. Just going to sort of open my mesh and, and look at over everything overlapping. So there's the body and the arm, uh, the arm piece is a closed loop and I, I see that it's pressing through the torso completely. Then we have the torso to the legs and uh, I'm just looking through the mesh itself. The main idea here is that if you have your whole mesh as one piece uh, and you were to drill a hole in the top of it and try to fill it up with water, would it leak out anywhere? And the thing is, is that you can't have it leak. It has to be completely closed. So here I'm just going through all the separate pieces and making sure that everything is overlapping fully. Uh, looking at the little rocks that I stuck into my base, I just put those in at the end to kind of spice it up and make it look a little more interesting. Uh, and then on to uh, decimating the separate subtools. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decimate each piece individually and then merge them together at the end into one final piece. Uh, I do this just because I don't think my computer could handle uh, merging. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, here I'm zooming in on the teeth, and I'm just doing this again to show uh, sort of decimating appropriately. So the teeth make up a very small part of the mesh. It'll make a very small part of the print when it's done, so I can decimate those a lot. Uh, the head, the torso, the legs. You know, these are bigger pieces, so I want to decimate them, you know, less in comparison because I want that detail to remain. Uh, 
here I am just open opening the decimation master I'm gonna run the pre-process current <clears throat> on the head this is just gonna give me the uh, it's gonna create the different decimation levels that I can bring it to uh, the good thing about the decimation master is that you can undo your decimation you have to do the pre-process once which will take a little while and then you can choose the uh, appropriate decimation level afterwards so undoing is, is nice because you can decimate it you know like 50 percent and then you say well maybe I have to do much more than that maybe I want it you know two percent of the original or, or five percent or whatever uh, so here I'm just kind of running through the levels and I'm clicking the frame button so I can see the the density of the, the decimated mesh and, and if the detail is you know uh, brought down within reason. Here's the really triangulated decimated mesh. It turns it into kind of a, a mess. So I'm using the move tool here to, here to show that <clears throat> uh, it's the mesh is not exactly workable after it's been decimated. Uh, you can you can kind of move it around a little bit but I think the real idea is that you run the decimation master and you kind of leave it at that. You don't want to play with it after you've done that. It's The mesh is just so weird that it's, it's not a good idea. Without getting into every little piece here, I, I've decimated each piece separately and then I've merged them together and now I'm just kind of giving my character a, a final once over. It's just making sure it's ready to print. Uh, so here zooming in on the arm a little bit. You can see the detail is kind of chunky compared to what we had there, but it's plenty for what you want to print. Uh, you just have to keep thinking about the scale of the piece. Here is the neck detail, the, the back plate and the front plate. You can see the muscles going under that center plate that detail worked out. Uh, so I, I just like where it's at and it's ready to print. So that'll be the end of this chapter. Uh, next is chapter 6. That's the final one. We're going to go over using the exporter and just final thoughts on 3D printing.